One more. Turn back to Matthew 14, back to the beginning of the New Testament. Matthew 14, and we'll be done this morning. Matthew 14, I want to show you something. Because like Jesus was, starting in verse 22 of Matthew 14, like Jesus was in his earthly ministry, he still is today. I want to show you what Jesus is doing, because the second thing John saw in Patmos was he had eyes like a flame of fire, kind of laser eyes. He can truly see us wherever we are. Do you remember how in the Gospels they picture Christ's ministry to his disciples? He was on earth. Remember, he always knew where his disciples were. And when he was needed, he always showed up. Well, there's a spot. And if you look at verse 22, immediately Jesus, this is Matthew 14, 22, made his disciples get into the boat. So Jesus forced them to get into this boat, sail out into the middle of the Sea of Galilee. Okay. And they went before him and he said, just go the other side. And he said, I'll send the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he left his disciples in that boat paddling out to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. This is in Israel. This is a 12 by 6 body of water. And Jesus was on one side and he was telling them to go to the other side. And he said, I'll meet you over there. And look what happens. He went up on the mountain by himself to pray. By the way, this the mountain is pretty important because Jesus is on the mountain when he calls the disciples. He's on the mountain when he prays for him. He's on the mountain after his resurrection. He says, I'll meet you on the mountain and you come. And it's really the mountain of the Sea of Galilee. If you're on the Sea of Galilee, it's 600 feet below sea level. And if you look up from the Sea of Galilee, there's one gigantic towering cliff that comes right up to the edge and it towers over the Sea of Galilee. And that was right in the center of his ministry. So most likely that is the mountain. It's Today it's got a name. It's called Arbel. But he went up into the mountain, probably the mount called Arbel, by himself to pray and evening came. When's evening? For the Jews, it's at 6 p.m. And he was alone there. Now keep reading. Look at verse 24. Now the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. So by verse 24, the disciples have made it to the middle. They've gotten three miles out into the lake. And in the fourth watch. Now, why are details in the Bible? To tell us something. The first watch was from six evening till nine. So if you're on guard duty, first watch, six to nine, not bad. Second watch was from nine to twelve. The third watch was from twelve to to three. The fourth watch was the worst one. You ever driven all night in your car? Oh, it's hard to stay awake three to six a.m. It was fourth watch of the night, and Jesus went to them walking on the sea. They were allowed they were sent by the Lord out into a storm that he knew was coming, and he's up on the mountain, and it says he was watching them. They were in the middle of the sea, and he was watching them. He knew right where they were, in the middle of the dark, in the middle of the storm. But he lets them stay out there from 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10 to 11 to 12 to 1 to 2 to 3. And if you read the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of John, you know what you find? They were scared to death. The boat was sinking, water was in, they were bailing it out, the waves were crashing over, they thought they were going to die, they couldn't believe that they were out in this storm. But who sent them out there? Who knew the storm was coming? Who left them for nine hours in a sinking boat? But watch what happens. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. Now they're more afraid than sinking. It's a ghost. And they cried out. The word is scream for fear. Verse 27. But Jesus spoke to them and said, be of good cheer. It's I don't be afraid. And Peter asked to follow him and all that. Do you know what this tells us? It tells us that Jesus Christ knows where we are. He knows every detail of our lives. He knows every fear we dread to face. He knows every weakness that can defeat us. And he always comes to us to save us. Jesus didn't stop the storm. He just walked across the storm. Jesus won't take the cancer away. He'll just meet you right there while you're going through it. Jesus won't give you back the job that you had. He'll just meet you as you lose it. Jesus comes to us in our storm. And he wants us to invite him into our boat. You see, he's still doing the same thing today. Jesus was up on that mountain, knew right where his disciples were, and he was praying for them. Jesus is right now watching us. He knows right where we are, no matter what you're facing. And at the appropriate moment, he comes down right across the storm that we are going through in life. And he walks toward us. 
And if we'll look up, we will see Him. And He will get into our boat. And once He gets into our boat, He takes us safely wherever He wants us to go in that storm. This morning, there's more proof that Jesus lives than of any other truth in the universe. The proof is written in the hearts and lives of those who are sitting around you today. Jesus said, destroy this temple of my body. I will rebuild it in three days by resurrection. And he did. Now, Jesus is the temple by which we can worship God anywhere, anytime and always. He has become the universal meeting place for all of us because he's in our heart. And Jesus wants us to worship him this morning. The resurrection freed him to be anywhere, anytime, right what we need.